Hello everyone and welcome to how to install the RP2000 career mode in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. I've decided to try to make this as simple as possible for people transitioning from stock. And so for the first time ever, I'm going to attempt to use CCAN to install Realism Overhaul. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it and we will see how it goes. Now RP2000, the mod itself, I don't actually know how to put it on CCAM because I haven't used CCAM before. So uh, I'll explain that there are a few things that you will not be able to install via CCAM and I'll tell you uh, where to get those and I'll put the links in the video description. But uh, a lot of things we can use CCAM for. And uh, again, this is the first time here, so forgive me. We'll see how it works out, but Basically, we're installing the Realism Overhaul requirements and Real Solar System via CCAN. And I'll have a text file in the video description for which mods, which version of each mods I have installed, and also the CCAN file, though that doesn't seem to have the version information correct. So watch out for that. Maybe don't use that. And I'll explain why in a bit. So Advanced Jet Engines is a Realism Overhaul requirement. And uh, here we have a B9 procedural wings, I generally think is advisable. Uh, so I, I almost always consider it a requirement for realism overhaul. So uh, this is the version 0.93 here for 1.8.1. Uh, background resources is required by realism overhaul. That's just uh, auto install as it says there. And uh, going down here, click through blocker is required for a whole bunch of stuff, including the toolbar. So that's installed as required and you can see the version there. So again, if you need to install a different version than you expect, it's on this version tab and you can see the relationships. Uh, so this uh, depends on zero mini AVC and toolbar controller. So make sure that that's all right. Normally CCAN will just install those things for you. Uh, double check that you've got the right version. Community resource pack 1.4.2 that is required for real fuels. Uh, community tech tree that is one point uh, sorry three point uh, sorry that was yeah okay. This sometimes has the one colon which is confusing. 3.4.4 is the version I'm installing here, and let me just double check because I have uh, my own test install. So this is all going into this folder, and then I have my previous test install, so I can check which version of Community Tech Tree have I been using before this, right? Uh, it looks like the version I have been using is 3.4.0. And that should not cause a problem, but we'll see, we'll see. So I'm using 3.4.0 in the test install and uh, the one that I've been doing the videos in previously. And so this is a slightly more advanced version of Community Tech Tree. Hopefully it's not gonna cause any problems. Uh, then we have Fair Aerospace Research, which is required by Realism Overhaul. And you can see 0.16.0.3. That should be no problem. Hangar Extender should be no problem. Uh, so that's the top version there. Curl Alarm Clock uh, is required mainly because you want to see the date that it is year 2000, I guess. Uh, maybe that will be helpful. Uh, that's the main way you will do that. So uh, I've got the 1.8.1 version of that there. Uh, and uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement is required by Realism Overhaul. And again, uh, most of these will automatically be selected if you select Realism Overhaul. But uh, I want you to be careful about a few of them. One of them is Copernicus. Copernicus, you have to get the latest one for 1.8.1. And unfortunately, the latest version of KS, uh, sorry, a real solar system for 1.8.1 isn't compatible with this Copernicus because they, yeah, that's a little bit messed up. So this version of Copernicus will go for a slightly older version of real solar system. So you need to make sure to pick the right version of that. Uh, KSC switcher, we've got version 2.0 here. We'll hopefully that doesn't do anything weird. Um, MechJab, we've got the latest version. Uh, modular Flight Integrator comes with real, Realism Overhaul. And we've got 1.2.7, which is the version for 1.8. A Module Manager, we've got the latest version. Persistent Rotation, 1.8.7. That uh, normally goes with Realism Overhaul. That's uh, and that's a recommendation, not a requirement, I believe. 
Uh, another recommendation is procedural fairings and procedural parts, but those are required for RP2000. Otherwise, you're not going to have the stuff you need in the tech tree. So those are requirements for RP2000. All of this is baseline RP2000 stuff. You need it, basically. Real fuels, 13.3.1 uh, is what we have here. Uh, real plume, 13.3.2. Uh, Waterfall configurations may come eventually, but I haven't got them yet. So stick to real plumes for now. Uh, real solar system, so this is the important one. 18.1.3 is the version that will go with Copernicus. It'll automatically try to give you 18.1.4 or 18.1.5. Uh, those will throw an error for Copernicus. So just uh, step back a few there. And I'm putting in the 8K textures, even though I've got 16K textures from the GitHub. Um, you can get better textures than these, but I'll put the 8K textures in just for consistency's sake so that you see the stuff that is being installed through the testing. Uh, real solar, uh, sorry, real shoots. You can see 1.4.8 there. Real heat, uh, latest version 5.1. Realism overall. Now this is important. It's not the the best possible version with 1.8.1, and that's because uh, that's actually sort of more catered to 1.10. And in my 1.8.1 installs, I use this one, which is the the one that was sort of catered to 1.8.1. So it's uh, version 12.8.1 of Realism Overhaul. If you use the later versions, I don't know how it's going to work out. So uh, just for safety's sake, this might be better. Uh, so that is what we're going with there. And maybe it'll, it might work, but I, I just am not sure what changes they've made since then. Uh, RSS date time for matter is probably a good idea so that you get the right date and time. Uh, so this all versions seems like a good one and they'll automatically select that I believe. The smoke screen for real plumes is a requirement and the latest version works there. And the solver engines is for advanced jet engine. It's a requirement. It doesn't say that there but anyway it is a requirement of advanced jet engines I believe. And TAC life support is the life support mod that I'm going with for now but I expect that I'll try to make Kerbalism compatible but that's an interesting thing and it's a very complicated mod uh, to make sure it's balanced with the rest of the stuff going on so textures unlimited is required by a whole bunch of stuff including procedural parts now and two bar and two bar controller are pretty standard and zero mini ABC was required by the two bar stuff the click-through blocker and all that so that is what we have in the install through CCAN then uh, so I've already uh, hit install for those. That gives us uh, this look to the game data folder. But this isn't all that we need need. So getting the other stuff that we need involves going to links that I'll put in the video description, my small rockets pack, shear strut engines, and RP2000 itself. And so I'm just going to download them as they are here into that folder. So the clean folder, I'm just going to dump it in here and then unzip it. So I'll get all three of these. Okay, so we've got those three hanging out here and those just need to just dump game data like that and overwrite. So these are just part packs and they mostly handle the beginning of the tech tree and some engines. Uh, we can skip the license file, that's the same for both. And finally, RP2000, let me parse it out for you. We have a Kerbal Construction Time preset. So that goes in there. Uh, for some reason, putting the preset outside of the Kerbal Construction Time folder didn't work out very well. We've got the Copernicus settings for real solar system to set all the planets to where they ought to be for the year 2000. This is where they would be if you time warped real solar system to the year 2000, not necessarily where the real planets are. Okay, so this just if you actually time warped real solar system to the year 2000, that's where the planets are. Uh, RP2000 itself places parts in the tech tree and prices them. There's patches for procedural fairings and procedural parts and RSS date time. Uh, science tags uh, to make sure that the thermometer barometer and other stuff like the goo can work even if you have different parts that do that stuff. 
that's a little bit complicated, but uh, patch for community tech tree, and then drive from RP0. So this is based on the 1.1.3 version of RP0. And I've uh, imported because it was a Creative Commons with attribution, and here's my credit, and I'm telling you attribution. Uh, so uh, contracts, these are uh, with some modifications uh, imported from RP0, and the custom barn kit configuration, which reminds me that we need custom barn kit. Uh, so is that here? Yes. So let me check that, and yes. Up Apply. We want to install custom barn kit. And so that's something I forgot listed on here. And so I'm just going to edit it. <laughs> uh, custom barn kit. It's important. That'll ensure that the buildings up building upgrades are customized. Okay, so that's done. And so this is the stuff that we unzip. Oh, and there's also a patch for Kerbal alarm clock, so it shows the right date. Now, the, that we replace, but we haven't put Kerbal construction time in. Now, that's optional. So it's up to you whether you want to use Kerbal construction time uh, via CCAN here. I guess we'll just install it like this. Now, there's two versions of Kerbal construction time here. Let me double check which version I'm actually using. Okay, it looks like I'm using 1.4.7.12. Don't ask me, but let's just keep it nice and consistent. So let's... And magic core is required by Kerbal Construction Time, so that's fine. All right, so we are installing Kerbal Construction Time. We are not installing the suggested mods yet. I will consider compatibility with those later on. Okay, so now we have Kerbal Construction Time. But it overwrote, oh, well, no, it wouldn't have overwritten the uh, preset. The preset is there. Yeah, because it wouldn't have the preset before. All right, so that is Kerbal Construction Time. Other optional things that you may consider uh, installing that may not be in, uh, in CCAN are RSS Visual Enhancements. And I think RSS Visual Enhancements is not in CCAN. I'm going to cheat here. You're going to have to find that out. That's optional, and that's just for your personal preference. Distant Object Enhancement, Environmental Visual Enhancements, the plugins. Uh, if you're familiar with how clouds work in Cobalt Space Program, this should be somewhat familiar. And stuff like Scatterer and RSS Visual Enhancements. And I believe that's all I wanted. Uh, Planet Shine is another one. So what we've got here for visual stuff, distant object enhancement, environmental visual enhancements, Planet Shine, RSS visual enhancements, Scatterer, and that's I'm just going to copy that over from a different install. So that's a good point to make. Uh, please do make different installs of Kerbal Space Program. This should not be, like if you got it through Steam, you should not be using that folder to mod it, hopefully. And also through Steam, you can get the older versions and also through the website, you can get the older versions of Kerbal Space Program. But generally I have multiple copies of Kerbal Space Program installed at the same time, and you can do that. You just have to make sure to run it by the executable file here. That's, so you double click on that to run it, or you can create a shortcut. Okay, so we've got some visual mods, and let me just tell you which version of RSS Visual Enhancements I'm using. 1.4.5.3. 1.4.5.3. Okay, so that is the version of RSS Visual Enhancements I've got here. Okay, so assuming that everything else is good, let's fire it up and see if it works. All right, here we go. With relatively few part mods, it should not take too long to start this up. And let's see how many patches we have here. Saving cash, a mere 9,183 patches. I don't know about the DLC packages yet. I don't really know how the science works in the breaking ground package in relation to the way science works in realism overhaul. So it's a little bit complicated. Okay, well, we, we've got Earth. Uh, KSP is currently using 4.7 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, and we're going to start a new career mode. 
Um, I'm gonna go with hard. Indestruct indestructible facilities, though. And see if any everything works. And I go with allow action, all action groups, so. I do anticipate having test flight compatibility. Actually, test flight is compatible with the parts in other mods. It's just the ones that I have made the small rockets pack and the shear strut engine pack that aren't currently test flight configured. Okay, focus follows mouse, let's say. Okay, so uh, choose a preset, RP2000, save. And that's derived from the RP0 preset for Kerbal Construction Time. So if you're familiar with those numbers and how that works in KSP 1.1.3, then this should be very familiar as well. So we do the upgrade points. I'm just checking that this works normally. Okay, so that's there. And let's discuss the tech tree for RP2000 just a little bit. Most of your uh, parts from other mods are going to go in these manufacturer slots up here and also down here. And some of the stock parts will go there too, like Aerojet Rocketdyne makes the RS-25s. And the logic here is that these are existing large manufacturers and you can do a deal with them and give them some research or something. And then uh, the unlock cost for these parts is gonna be cheap because they've done all the research already. But the unit cost for those parts is gonna be relatively expensive compared to the ones that you research on your own. So the unlock costs for these will be comparatively more expensive, but the unit costs will be less. But you have to do the research. So that's what the main body of the tech tree is. And uh, even though there's the year 2000, you can see we've got the date right there. And uh, th I've put SpaceX and Blue Origin here because they're rather large players with like the two richest people in the world. I don't know where Blue Origin is. I didn't put it in alphabetical order. Um, Okay, uh, well, we have no Blue Origin parts right now. Of course, I've made some, and my own mods should be compatible with it, but I'll double check. Uh, so uh, my part mods for the Blue Origin, New Glenn, etc., the Real Rockets pack, I made configurations for those, but they might need some work. Uh, but FASA, will be, most of the parts we placed here. But yeah, SpaceX and Blue Origin, I figured they'll be, they're big players with billionaires behind them. So I, I want to give the feel of being a scrappy little company and having those parts in here is... Uh, anyway, so here we have, for instance, the little Ither engine for the Astro Rocket, Delphin. At start, you'll have CubeSats available. Basically, if you can buy it off of the internet, <laughs> which CubeSats you can. You got a lot of CubeSats. That'll make it a lot easier, by the way, for a lot of things. We've got the procedural fairings. We've got the procedural tanks. And uh, we have some basic controllers like the ARB stuff. If you install Raider Nix uh, mods, the US Rockets pack will have the little ARB parts as well. But uh, parts that I figure a, a reasonably competent space company would be able to make on their own without doing a deal. Uh, they're they're gonna end up in the middle of the tech tree even if they're from some preset manufacturer like uh, even if they're technically from some legacy manufacturer they'll probably be here so but you know stuff like the Saturn V rocket those are gonna be here there's a really crappy Merlin one because that's just a resized stock part uh, so we have thanks to the small rockets back the Astra rocket stuff the Firefly Alpha I'll put test flight stuff on there, I'm sure. And then these SE engines are from the Sure Strut engine pack. So they're more generic. They're not by a particular manufacturer. So we've got Skyrora there. So if you want to play like one of those companies, you can. And we've got the structural parts for their stages uh, as from my small rockets pack. And then going up, uh, the Sure Strut engine pack adds a lot of engines going up here. We've got some here. I think that's about the top end of the... So it doesn't go too far. You'll have to get some fancy stuff. This covers everything. This is Community Tech Tree. You can get KSP Interstellar and it'll fill the stuff here. And that, if you get to this part of the Tech Tree, I recommend that. And maybe we'll increase the number of science points the sciences take because I don't know how fast it's going to be for people to get to really advanced technologies like metamaterials or whatever, uh, or experimental motors or... Um, ultra high energy physics 
So it depends on how easy that turns out to be. We need some play testing. Uh, USI stuff tends to be down here in the tech tree. So, and I'll try and do more stuff here with my own parts, like getting some additional pods and station parts, because I think this area is a little bit thin. So there might be a third mod that I make that fills this part in a little bit better. We do have, of course, the stock command pod and that sort of thing, right? But uh, that's not sufficient. Of, again, there are the other mods that you can uh, throw in to fill things up a little bit more too and do deals with the companies to get their pods. But uh, that's all possible. But right now I have focused mainly on the start of the tech tree. So this is still early days in RP2000 development, but that's what it looks like. And that's the general logic of it. And making it compatible with community tech tree means that any mod that's compatible with community tech tree, you'll see the parts there. The question, the only question is whether it's priced properly. And with KSB Interstellar, there is no such thing as priced properly uh, because we don't know what the prices of those are. And like also with Umbra, with the USI uh, tech packs, I, I have some pricing ideas for those and there might be patches for USI to make sure the pricing is all right. But anyway, they'll go, they'll slot in here just fine because they are configured for community tech tree already. And so any other parts, like I think near future is also community tech tree compatible. So you can expect those to fit in. Oh, there's all those uh, realism overhaul Nerva things. Okay, so that is what we have here in the tech tree. And then in the contracts, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, another thing we need to install. So contract configurator, we need to add that in, that is required. And we need to, very much required to get any contracts. So if you don't get any contracts, that is what you did not have. So we're going to add that in. And I just, no, uh, I'm not gonna put Wakepoint Manager, just the contract configurator. And the latest version will do. And I'll add that to the requirement list on RP2000. Okay, we are loading again. And don't worry, the text file in the video description will contain all the mods that I installed via CCAN. The only mods that it won't include are small rockets, the Shearstart engine pack, RP2000, and the optional stuff, the visual stuff. Don't need that. Uh, here we go. So these are uh, basic. Uh, contracts you get first flight send a payload into space and your first satellite once you do the first satellite you can move on to the other things uh, so um, sometimes it requires other things like lunar flyby uh, so there's a lunar flyby uncrewed so this requires the your first satellite and then you'll be able to pick that up and then after you pick that up uh, you can I don't know, well, that's crewed Mars flyby, so I guess uh, moon landing first makes sense there. So, yeah, there is some sort of chain to it all, but it's all sort of dumped here. There's these flyby contracts, and these are uncrewed, I believe. Yeah, Mars flyby. Uh, these others require different flybys. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I, these were copied from RP0. I might change whether they require it or not. In other words, do you really need to fly by the moon in order to fly by Mars? I mean, it's not necessary, right? I mean, it. yeah, it's not necessary necessary. So, especially because we're in the modern day and not in the 1950s and 60s, it might not be required. I don't even know how you get a Phobos flyby without going to a Mars flyby, but whether you completed the contract, anyway, uh, there are always things that I want to fill around with, but the contracts are here at least. And I just wanted to check on the clouds. The clouds are there. All right. And we can see the various launch sites that you can pick from. And hopefully that'll work with Kerbal Construction Time, right? I'll have to check on that later. But all right, that's basically how RP2000 is set up. And hopefully I didn't make it too confusing. Uh, yeah. So with that and all the links will be in the video description, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.